and we're back again for our fourth video of my first four-part kind of series, which I'm um, just going to call Ivy Infusion. And I kind of just, um, in the previous ones, I just kind of went over um, the whole IV process. I have now just finished my infusion. Um, I have washed my hands completely clean and scrubbed them and been being very careful, but because I did touch the bag a little bit, I'm going to do it. Um, extra carefulness here and probably not a word but um, and sanitize my hands real good and just make sure that no bad germs or bacteria or any unwanted particles of any kind get into my line. Um, and sorry if I look a little bit funny and I sound a little funny. Um, one thing that I should share just so that you guys can kind of understand about Lyme's disease is like I puke all the time and I puke out of nowhere. I puke for all different kinds of reasons. Sometimes I know, sometimes I don't. But I just finished puking and it wasn't fun. So I'm not feeling good. My throat's just the. Uh... But, anyways, <clears throat> not to be on negative, Nancy. So I just, I don't, I want to shed light on the situation and how horribly hard it is. Like, my life has gotten to the point where puking is normal. <laughs> um, but anyways, so again for unhooking to get back with our program. Sorry, I tangented. Tangented. <laughs> um, but um, my line is still hooked up to the pump. The pump, um, I wish I got it on camera, but I didn't. But it beeps at you and gives you a two minute warning to say that you have two minutes till your infusion's done. And then it will start beeping again. Each time you have to press a button, um, the acknowledge button pretty much, um, and just let it know and then the beeping will stop. And then if you don't take the line off right away, it'll have, it'll beep at you periodically, like an alarm on snooze kind of will come back and repeat and repeat until you address the issue. Um, that's kind of what will happen. So when you are done your infusion, you want to turn the pump off, otherwise that beeping will continue and it can get rather annoying. Um, all right, so for the unhooking stage, remember how I was stating you always need to flush your line with some saline after you're done your infusions. So we're going to start out by doing that. You know, I bet you all can guess because I've like made you guess this how many times now already. We got to clean the line. That's right. <clears throat> but um, I just want to make another note here for you guys to take notice of this. You see how I have my wipes underneath, my wipes underneath. See, this is so that when I'm going through this and I lift up and I do, I know what I cleaned and when I didn't by knowing, are they there or are they not there? Um, so that's in the beginning videos what I was talking about. Like organization is really key to success, especially when you're sick. Anybody that's sick, you're going to have some brain fog. I mean, it fatigues your body to be sick. Alrighty. So, let's unhook this baby, because, gosh golly, I would like to go to sleep. <laughs> Alright, <clears throat> so to unhook, you just want to twist left on your line side. So just twist left, you know, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, you just follow that principle. So lefty-loosey, and here we go, Z. So after I unhook, I am going to, to be honest with you, I'm just going to clean this twice, because I threw up, and... I don't know, I'm just paranoid, okay? I threw up in my line, it's like in the front here, so I was a little worried, and I just want to make sure, and like I said, um, two of the nurses that have come to my house have taught me whenever you, you know, you've been out and about with your line and stuff like that, it's a really good idea to clean your line twice, uh, you know, get all the grubs off the downspout area, so that, that way when you're going to clean this area, uh, none of the grubs or anything from there gets mixed in. It's just cleaning the whole entire thing. So that's kind of um, my protocol and what I've done. And like I said, I have been successful with um, no infections. I've heard a lot of different stories and stuff of other people getting infections. Um, like, don't do your infusions in bed with your animals. Frankly, you probably shouldn't be doing your infusions in bed unless you've got like a sterile tray that you're doing them on. Um, 
but you really want to have a sterile area that you can keep clean um, because honestly cleanliness is the way to succeed at this um, all right so I've now cleaned my line okay to be honest with you see this is what I mean by my brain fog thing I've actually forgotten if I cleaned the tip or not so I'm gonna go back and just clean it again because I'm extra paranoid and now you can kind of see after I've thrown up and gone through um, this whole process takes a bit of a toll on my body and now I'm becoming, I'm just, I'm really, I'm really tired right now. So I'm just trying to trek through it, but I, I wanted to do this, um, because I wanted, I wanted you guys to see the rawness of the disease. And I mean, I'm sure I'm going to have to get a little bit more comfortable with like videotaping and stuff to show you some of the real rawness. Um, but in time, you know, I would like to like show you like all the ins and outs and details as to what happens to a person when they're suffering from a condition like this. Um, one thing I should know is that <clears throat> I, uh, the doctor, Dr. Mar, that I was seeing because I became an IV case, I actually got sent down to San Francisco. So my current doctor, I'm in Washington State, but the doctor that treats me is in San Francisco. That's how hard it is to find a doctor and somebody that can take care of you. There's, I literally don't have access to a doctor in my state that has the ILADS training and is a Lyme literate doctor um, that would know how to treat my diseases. Um, the weird thing about my conditions um, are that they thought that maybe I got bit by two ticks because I've got like multiple infections usually you might get one or two but I got like five um, so that's a big issue I got Bartonella, Babesia, two forms of Ehrlichia and then one that I can't pronounce right but it starts with an anno I'll get the name for you so um anyways <clears throat> so um, because of the complicated nature and the need for IVs they sent me um, Dr. Mara uh, sent me down to uh, Pacific Frontier um, in Foster City in San Francisco, uh, which is where I go to uh, see my doctor and the doctor that is taking care of me and overseeing all of my Lyme treatment right now. Um, and I have to say also, <clears throat> um, they are a big part of um, saving my life and helping me and um, it's places like that that have stepped outside of the box and taken the initiative to educate themselves about Lyme's disease so that they can help people are what um, are saving people like me right now and at least pioneering the forefront, you know, for the future of Lyme's disease treatment. So I also want to just, you know, let you guys see what's going on so that you can see how successful the treatments are, what are treatment options, and all that. So we'll go through that more. All right, so I'm ready to put the saline in. I've now know I clean my line, <laughs> finally. Um, and so I've got this all ready to go. Remember, I prepped it by putting the air out of the line. I'm gonna take this off. Don't touch it. Remember, no touchy touchy. And if you see like a piece of hair floating in the air or a particle or a bug or something and you see it touch your line, clean your line again. <clears throat> you cannot emphasize that enough. It's just not worth the risk. All right, so I'm just doing that pumping that, that I showed you before. I just don't want to be too redundant. And usually I prep up this and I prep this at the same time, but I got a little sidetracked because <clears throat> shooting the video at the same time is a little new to me. Um, <clears throat> With heparins, uh, one thing I noticed is if you just unscrew the cap and push up, it's a lot um, harder to push up, but a nurse showed me a trick. So if you actually pull down on the syringe like that, you'll hear like this little click, you kind of heard that, and it loosens it up. And then you pop the cap. You do not want to do pulling down before you pop the cap, because then you're pulling outside air in. So. And it just goes up so much nicer. Otherwise, I would be struggling a little with this. 
And then again, we're just waiting for a little droplets and ready to go. All right, so <clears throat> as we've routinely been practicing, I'm going to disconnect from my saline and I'm going to get ready to finalize this infusion. And to finalize it, we're putting in the heparin, which I have noted in the previous videos. It's a blood thinner. It just cleans the line out after you use it and um, helps to avoid any um, coagulations or build up on the line. All right. Looks like I have covered about everything. Um, one thing that <clears throat> um, I would like to know and for you not to forget is whenever you're throwing your stuff out in the garbage and stuff, um, you want to make sure your name's not on the labels and things. So I tend to try to rip that off and make sure if I'm putting it in the recycling. Um, so just, I don't know, keep that in note depending on how important your privacy is, where you live, and all that kind of stuff. But that's just my general rule of thumb and practice. That's kind of what the nurses told me to do. Um, but that's up to your discretion. All right, we are finally done our last cleaning, amen. And heparin time. So the heparin, which I haven't showed you how to do yet, luckily is not that complicated. It's actually just like the same just want to do push, push, release, push, release, push, and release. I kind of see five increments here, so I just kind of like do five increments. Um, and then <clears throat> I kind of leave it up to your judgment, but I mean, I probably would do less than three pushes on this at minimum. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at. Again, I'm not a medically trained professional, um, so everybody keep that in mind. I'm just a patient sharing my story, and I strongly recommend um, that you always follow your doctor's rules before you would listen to something um, that I would say, or at least cross-reference it with your doctor before you try. Alrighty, so I do this. It's, you know, sometimes some people might think I'm a little nutters and over the top, um, when it comes to the cleanliness part because I clean the line at the end for the simple fact that I'm just going to cap the line and I want to make sure I'm putting a clean capped line in. Uh, some people think that it's not really that necessary because this has a sealed um, top on it and when you rip it off there's actually an alcohol pad inside of there so that when you screw it down on your line there's alcohol comes out and it also cleans it. Um, again, I just... I don't want to take any risks <laughs> but yeah well guys this is pretty much summing up my um, my infusion series of videos um, I really look forward to doing more of these and I truly do look forward to sharing my story with everybody I hope again I think I've said this a few times but I just hope that in opening up my story we can find a way to help each other in this world, to understand each other, and to maybe evolve as a society in such a way that people like me don't fall through the cracks for six years and have a disease spread to our brain um, due to a broken medical system. Um, and that's a big topic that I'm eventually going to talk about a lot, too. Um, so stay tuned, guys. I'm sorry I'm kind of getting faded out right now, but um, stay tuned. I am beyond excited to share more of this with you. I'm just so happy that I am finally able to do that and that I'm at a place that I can, for a while, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to. Um, and again, I want to just give a shout out to um, Pacific Frontier Medical, um, who has been taking care of me. Um, they're my Lyme specialist, and I cannot thank them enough. And I can't thank Dr. Mar enough for making sure that I got to the right place and taking care of me and figuring everything out and ensuring that my journey 
as successful as it could be. So thank you to all of you people. And I hope that in doing this, we'll come together and start making a stronger Lyme community or at least Lyme awareness. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I got to say for now. But it was so lovely and so nice to have some time to do this and to share. I have been really sad and depressed about a lot of things and it's just been really hard because I spent a lot of time alone. Um, even though the cone uh, the coronavirus is here. I just don't feel like my life has changed that much. Um, because usually I don't really see a lot of people. I just stay home and like go out once a day and I do a little walk. I don't have a lot of energy, but I have to walk because I have another condition, a neurological condition in my leg. We'll talk about that another day too. Um, but anyways, Gosh, see, I'm talking in circles because I was going to sum it up and tell you something and I honestly forgot what it was that I was going to say. So, you're going to have to tune in next time to find out what it was. <laughs> Alright guys, that's it for now. Um, thanks again and all the best to all of you. Good health.